Alright, let's talk about Gum. She is the poster girl of Jet Set Radio. Along with B and DJ Professor K, you can expect Gum will be right there as well in all the promotions for the games. She's in the promotional art, she's in the game covers, she's in the soundtrack covers. Being the poster girl also means she gets the most fan art compared to the other characters as well. She's also playable in three Sega crossover games with B to represent Jet Set Radio. Gum is such an important character when it comes to Jet Set Radio, especially since she's playable in both games and the one getting you through the game's basics as the tutorial girl. And I mean, she will make sure you know how to play the game. What also makes Gum so recognizable is her simple but effective design in both games. Her future design didn't change as drastically in comparison to other characters, but a number of changes set her apart from her OG counterpart. This change in design was to go with the new direction in Gum's character, as DJK describes her as um, a real cool lady who leaves a trail of broken hearts wherever she goes. To go into a bit more detail in Gum's character change, in the English manual for Jet Set Radio Future, DJK describes her as a perverse lady with the tendency to abandon a guy in 10 minutes after winning his heart. In the Japanese manual for the game, she's said to hold the gang together alongside Korn and appears to be more calm and composed than him. It also brings up the fact that she abandons a guy in 10 minutes, with the website describing her as a bad judge of character. Gum is easily in my top 3 of Jet Set Radio characters, but despite this, she's also the main culprit when it comes to some controversy amongst Jet Set Radio content creators. I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. A big thing I've noticed amongst the Jet Set Radio community from an outsider perspective is that the safe for work side and the not safe for work side do not like each other. This is where Gum comes into play in the conflict. A trait in Gum's character that's been prevalent in both games is her sex appeal, with Future leaning more into that aspect of her character with her description and her design change. The safer work side does not like how this trait has become part of Gum's character, and when it comes to those specifically making not safer work content of Gum, there's the audience that are appalled by it and those who make it. Gum's portrayal and representation are always clashing between these two sides of the community on how they want Gum to be seen and what they want her to be, and less about who she actually is. Throughout the years, I've experienced the two extreme sides of how people view Gum's character. There's the one side that absolutely detests the sexual part of her character. That side ignores and disowns that part of her character and sees those who makes content of Gum or sees her in that lewd manner as complete weirdos. Then there's the other side which mostly consists from the fanfiction writers who took that aspect of Gum being a heartbreaker and cranked it up to 1 million. They turn Gum into this girl who likes to sleep around with a bunch of guys and she's a complete harlot. As a former fanfiction writer and I have written my own Jet Set Radio story, there was one thing that was always consistent with a lot of these stories. And there's a small amount of Jet Set Radio stories so the bad ones really stick out. Writers like to write Gum as someone who just slept around and just acting like the most deplorable person ever. You guys heard me do a reading of a Just Said Radio story, so you know what I'm talking about. That fanfic I read was your average bad Just Said Radio story. And it's so funny because when it comes to Gum's loot nature, it never really shows up in the games. It doesn't show up in the OG game for obvious reasons. In future, there is no indication of Gum's heartbreaking nature despite what DJK tells us. Gum is a very calm and collected character. She's the second in command of the GGs along with Korn. She acts as both the mediator and the teacher. I joke about her constantly spewing tutorials, but her doing that is just part of her also being a secondary leader. She's also very welcoming to other members who join the GGs, even to rival members. My favorite moment of Gum's character is at the end of the game where she shows her hesitance of wanting to get involved with Goji's wackiness, but she's still willing to go out fighting. At the end, she's very humble about her and the GG saving the world, stating that the only thing they want is for everyone to live freely and have fun. In the Sega crossover games, we get a glimpse of a more cocky and snarky side of Gum. Also helps that she's one of the few characters to get a new voice and line specific to this game. Bring it on, sucker! No way! 
Yay! You gotta be kidding. How dare you beat me? That was just a test. Next time, I win. Wanna try and do that again? So you got lucky. Big deal. Give it a rest. Ugh, this is so disappointing. No fair. Hey, I did it. Outstanding. The voice actor does a great job at showing Gum's more competitive side. The other beneficial thing is that since the crossover games were mostly using OG Gum, it made that version of the character come to life. I really appreciated that. So Gum is not some thought. The loot aspect is not even explored and the people who took that trait to the extreme misinterpreted its meaning and its use of it, completely undermining the other cool things about the character. The folks who have disgust towards those who create or take part in 18 plus just said radio content also can take their viewpoints to an extreme degree. Now, I want to make this abundantly clear. If you're someone who's not into 18 plus stuff and it makes you uncomfortable, that's completely okay. You're in your right to avoid that stuff as much as anyone else. You can block that type of content, filter it out of your space. You can respectfully say that this type of content isn't for you. That's okay. I want to stress that. However, there becomes a problem when you start going over boundaries. There's no secret that I think Gum is very attractive and kinda hot, both designs I really love. There are folks who make some really good stuff showing Gum's more flirtatious trait and also still making her cool. Even if you're not huge on the sex appeal trait of Gum, it's still a part of her character and her sexuality plays a part in her design, especially in future. It's part of what makes her stand out. Everyone has their own unique way of portraying her. I've noticed that when it comes to artists, 18 plus creators draw gum more and are bigger gum fans in comparison to those who don't draw 18 plus stuff, who have a much bigger focus on other characters, which is really interesting. The 18 plus artists love that lewd trait playing a part in gum's character, while those who don't draw it strictly stick to her tomboyish, cocky, smart, and collected aspect. You would think both sides would have an understanding of each other's perspective, but that's not always the case. This is where the conflict between the two sides really starts to show on how they feel Gum should be. One side can say, I don't like seeing Gum in this way. And the other side can say, well, I like Gum in this manner. And I also think this trait is valid. The two sides interact with each other, but it rarely leads to an understanding or resolution. Sometimes it never gets resolved. And look, I get it sometimes. There are some deplorable, degenerate lives out there what? who like fictional things a little Bro, what are you talking too about, much. Man? However, there's also the side who takes fictional things a little too seriously. Some people really like certain characters because they're attractive, and it's just like that that. I'm like that with some characters too, but it's not that simple to talk about on the internet. When it comes to talking about anime and video game characters, you're always walking on a thin line and you have to be very careful in your wording. It doesn't help that in a lot of games and media, some important info is either not addressed or very ambiguous, such as these translated profiles and the guidebook for OG Jesset Radio. But these things are not brought up in any other medium or are completely retconned like it was in future. Japanese media puts us all in a weird situation of what we say about certain characters that can put a lot of people in a lot of trouble and get a lot of weird looks. People are afraid to talk about fictional characters and how they make them feel due to some deranged reactions that social media tends to have sometimes. Not safe for work creators already get tons of flack and hate from non-18 plus creators because they're either feeling petty that they're not getting the same amount of attention, likes, and publicity, completely undermining that those 18 plus creators work equally as hard as everyone else to build their craft, so they're just being very disrespectful to their work, or they want to feel that they have this moral correctness on the internet so they feel to shame these not safe for work creators for doing what they do even if it's not really harming anybody. There's certainly that crowd of individuals who are like, if you look at this character in this manner, you're sick, you're weird, pathetic, and a predator. Really strong words there. 
And with just that radio being such a small niche community, those people stand out. The adults know better and can just filter out what they don't like but still be respectful to those who create this 18 plus content. But there are a couple of minors who enter these spaces and who are getting a little too comfortable in disrespecting folks and going over boundaries. I want to make this clear. Minors shouldn't be in adult spaces, and adults should not bring minors in these spaces. Both sides are not okay. Gum's situation reminded me of another blonde female character in a rebel group who people give tons of flack over how others portray her in 18 plus content. Let's talk about An Takamaki in Persona 5. She's also a primary character who is caught in the middle of these type of conflicts. Hell, you can say that about every main modern Persona character. But An is a bigger example. Having the most fan art out of all the Persona 5 ladies, so she tends to be the central focus in these type of conflicts. So what do we know about An's character? She's kind, compassionate, a ditz, an airhead, and super outgoing. I think she's a joy of a character. Of course, the big difference with On is that since Persona 5 is an RPG for huge story, we get more involved with the cast. After a strong and compelling arc in the Kamoshida side with her character, things get muddy. On is always in the center of attention when it comes to any fan service. She's always getting perved on by gross old men, and yeah, the nude modeling thing in Madarame's arc is uncomfortable. And doing this with a senior in high school at the time of Persona 5 Strikers doesn't make this any easier, especially when you consider the contents of Kamashita's arc, seeing On being put in these situations can leave a bad taste in your mouth. But her alter ego and her persona, Carmen, take the form of a femme fatale archetype. Carmen is a character who would take advantage of her beauty and charm to make men fall for her, but quickly break the relationship when she is bored of her wooer, and then she looks for her next victim. Similar to how Gum is described in Future, An doesn't do the whole heartbreaking thing, but she does use her charm and beauty to her advantage during the game. She's also a model, and she's very confident in her body and her appearance. Persona 5 dancing especially shows that she's proud of how she looks. Can I still say that Persona 5 has mishandled An's character a number of times? Oh yeah. Do I still think An is an attractive character? Yes. Do I fault those who still look at or create stuff involving An in a lewd manner? No. I have no real reason to. And if I felt uncomfortable about it, I would avoid that type of content. Those who don't like not safe for work content can take their hatred too far. Going through the lengths of doxing, harassing, stalking, and spreading hate speech towards innocent people who have done nothing wrong just because they don't like what they make. It can happen, and it has happened in the Just Said Radio community before. Out of respect for my friend, I won't go into detail about what happened, just know that the minor who did that harassing is now off the internet for his deranged actions. The main point I want to bring home is that no one should be attacked or harassed over these things. You're all part of one community. Even if you don't see eye to eye on what you like, the one thing that brought you together is that you love your series, and in this case, Just Set Radio. Everyone has their own unique way of showing it. Gum has a lot of cool stuff about her. I love how much of a leader she is. I love seeing her cocky side. I love seeing how people can portray her heartbreaker personality that never got the chance to be explored in either game. All these aspects of Gum, are valid if you're not a fan of 18 plus content involving her or anyone else in the cast that's okay but have some courtesy towards those who creates that type of content have some respect for them have some respect for others boundaries and please have some respect for yourselves